The new big software update from Apple is here. What's up guys? So I've been rocking the iOS 14 on my iPhone for about 14 to 15 hours now. And I gotta say, Apple is a smooth criminal. Ow! Almost 90% of the features that we're gonna discuss in this video have been seen on Android for years. Apple has copied the Android, but in the right way. They not only copied these features, but they also gave them a new life. You see, Apple could have pulled this off earlier, but where the software and hardware is right now, this is the perfect time. So iOS 14, once again, Apple proves why they are the king of software updates. This update can be run on the newest iPhone 11 Pro all the way to the iPhone 6S from 2015. That is almost a five-year-old iPhone we're talking about. It's absolutely crazy. Where is the top Android phone from 2015 now? Yeah, that's right, trash. The original iPhone SE can run this update as well, making that the only iPhone to have that very old design while having the latest 2020 software from Apple. And honestly, it seems to be running really, really good because iOS 14, it's not that much different from iOS 13. Like there's no heavy duty stuff happening, so it still runs pretty good. So iOS 14 brings the widgets that look so damn polished. You can place them almost anywhere on the screen. Apple added their own mix in this with the stack widgets. They have a bunch of different widgets in one place where you can swipe through. You can also make your own stack of widgets as well. Now tapping and holding on an empty area will give you this. A very familiar playing field to delete extra pages of icons, something we have seen on Android for years. It's very similar to that. With iOS 14, you don't have to have the endless home screen of random applications. You can just have your important applications and have the rest of them go to something called App Library, which is Apple's fancy way of giving giving us a app drawer. It's pretty good. It automatically arranges all the applications based on their category on their respective folders. The best thing about all of this is just how smooth everything is, the transitions and everything. Like I cannot see a better way of pulling off a widget in a software space than what Apple has just done. There are some obvious dumb things that they have fixed like Siri, it doesn't take the whole screen when you launch it. Same thing with calling, you can ignore calls while doing other things and it doesn't take whole screen. We finally have something called picture in picture mode which I tweeted out as a joke on Twitter and some people thought that I was being serious. This is something we have on Android for years and now it's on iOS. A very welcome change indeed. Now perhaps my favorite feature on the iPhone with the iOS 14 is the back of your phone which can now be used to interact with your device and do certain functions. If you go to accessibility there is an option called tap back. We have double and triple tap actions. You you can set these to any functions that are mentioned in the list. For example, triple tap can allow you to take a screenshot, which is super handy. You don't have to press certain buttons now. Additionally, you can even set Siri shortcuts. For example, I have this shortcut of playing Daft Punk because I listen to Daft Punk a lot. So in this way, possibly you can even launch Google Assistant on your phone. There's also a brand new sound recognition engine added. So now your iPhone can recognize these voices. Now there's also been an option discovered that lets you change the frame rate of your display. Now, none of the iPhones have 120Hz display now, but in the future, we have the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max rumored to rock 120Hz OLED display. This could be a confirmation for that feature, which I'm really, really excited about. Also, if you launch the camera and go into control center, you have this camera recently notification on top, which is kind of like a privacy thing showing off that the camera is running in the background. If you go into the settings and go into the camera option, you can now set the mirror front camera options. So if you don't want your photos to be flipped after you take them, you can have that option, which is something that we have on many phones, like many Android phones, but now it's available on the iPhone as well. With iOS 14, Apple has added the ability to record quick videos, which was only present on the iPhone 11 series. Now it's available on pretty much all the older iPhones, which is really good. You also have the ability to change the video resolution and the video frame rate for the older iPhones as well well. Apple has also improved the performance of Siri and we also have some new updates to the Apple Maps which work really really good with the third-party applications. There's a translate app that translates everything really quick into different languages which is something that I would love to use if I'm traveling. This will be a handy way to interact with other people if I don't speak their language. Overall it's a great update again a lot of things taken from Android but there are some good features nonetheless. Everything is just so smooth it just makes 
makes you want to use widgets more and more. I believe with the next major update, we're probably going to see Apple taking more stuff from Android, like perhaps a theme engine for real customization of icons and colors or something like that. So my final thoughts about the iOS 14 is that it's really good. As for the stability, I'd say it's surprisingly good, but I highly don't recommend you to install this on your main device because it is a beta one. You don't know what problems you can run into. So definitely wait for other betas to come around or better just wait for the official public iOS 14 beta to arrive. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If I miss something, drop a comment and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.